Hi, I am Ruth Haynes, Structural Engineer at Quadrant. My role is basically to check that the buildings we are involved with stand up and satisfy approved document A of the building regulations. In practice, this means I check the calculations, drawings and sketches that the design engineer provides for the project. This video is about what we're looking for in a calculation package and how design engineers can make our job and therefore theirs, as easy as possible to ensure that we are constructing safe buildings. The best starting point for a calculation package is a design intent statement explaining the building philosophy. It doesn't need to be long, it just needs to set out what is the extent of the structural scope and who is designing what, how stability of the building is achieved, what the foundation proposal is and why, a summary of the loading and, if it's a larger building, a statement about disproportionate collapse. We like to see a structural scope because if there are gaps in the information, we'll understand why. So a scope might say, we are designing the steelwork to enable walls to be removed at ground floor level and the extension but the new roof to the extension will be trussed rafters designed by others. Or the scope might say, we are designing everything but the foundations which are going to be piled and the ground beams are also going to be designed by the piling contractor. If it's a larger building, such as a new supermarket, there may be a steel frame designed by one engineer, fabrication drawings and connection design and details by the steel fabricator, and foundation design by another consultant to loads provided by the engineer who designed the steel frame. It's important for us to know so that we are reassured that all of the structure is covered. A stable building can stand up to horizontal loading such as wind. The most stable buildings are built like boxes with four walls, but the trend at the moment is for large open plan spaces and lots of glazing. Therefore, modern new homes and extensions are getting more flimsy. So if I see a layout where an existing building has had lots of walls removed, or a new house with few walls, it's great if the design engineer can briefly explain how they intend to achieve stability. Structural engineers often deal with this issue by putting in steel frames to replace the walls that are removed. When it comes to foundations for smaller projects, it's extremely useful to have a statement telling us why the di design engineer has chosen this or that foundation solution. For example, we have designed deep trench footings because the soil is clay and there are trees. Or we decided to use a raft slab to support the new extension to avoid undermining the existing building. For larger buildings or projects on a site with odd ground conditions, as part of the calculation package, we would expect to see a geotechnical investigation appropriate for the building. Piling is a common solution for larger buildings, so we would also like to see the pile design. Loading is quite straightforward. It is divided into dead loads, variable loads and accidental loads. Dead loading is the weight of the building itself. Variable loads, also known as imposed and live loads, are the loads that may not always be present. These might include people, snow, wind. Accidental loads are loads caused by things you don't want to happen. The most common accidental load that a structural engineer might consider is that of vehicle impact. As part of the calculation package, there should be a list of all the loads that have been considered in the design and a discussion of why certain variable loads have been chosen. Disproportionate collapse is when an incident in a building causes the building to collapse out of proportion to the incident. Engineers are expected to design buildings to be robust so that they won't fully collapse if something happens to them, like a car crash or a gas explosion. 
A statement on disproportionate collapse is particularly important for larger buildings. We like to see what consequence class the building is in and what approach to designing a robust building has been taken. If the design engineer has decided to provide horizontal and vertical ties, we will want to see calculations for those tie forces. Alterations to existing buildings can be really challenging when it comes to disproportionate collapse because the existing building may not have been designed to current expectations. If you have any doubt, just get in touch with us to discuss your approach. In addition to the design statement, we'll obviously need the calculations themselves. The design engineer may use an analysis package or do calculations by hand. Both approaches are fine as long as everything is clearly set out. Hand calculations are more common on smaller projects, often combined with a bit of computer analysis. A lot of people see hand calculations as old fashioned but for me, they can be easier to read because the engineer can use the formatting, underlining, paragraphs, etc. to help explain the purpose of the calculation. For larger projects, such as a framed steel or concrete building, using an analysis package is most common. However, it's helpful if the design engineer also presents some explanation of the output. For example, annotated force and deflection drawings with some description. In addition to the calculation package, we'll need to see the drawings. If the project is small, we don't always need a CAD drawing, but a sketch of some kind, or marked up architect's drawings, showing things like the foundations, columns and beams. It's important to take any guesswork out of the construction process. The drawings are an important line of communication to us and to the builder. The question to ask is, can anyone well, anyone in the construction industry, pick up the drawing and know what should be built. If you have any questions, just get in touch using the number that's on screen now. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.